go get him again. What's going on, Fragrance family? Welcome to another episode of Sampling Samples. Every Sunday, we are going to be sampling. Sampling Samples is a series where I wear a scent through a sample as much as the little sample lets me. Not all samples are made alike. It is my scent of the day today, and I'm gonna give you as much detail as I can on that particular scent and give you my final thoughts. Is it bottle purchase worthy? Am I gonna get another sample, or is it just a straight up pass? Today's uh, video is, of course, as you know, Eau de Mante par Deep Tick. Now, I'm always looking for a great mint-based scent. It's no secret I love mint as a note. The house of Deep Tick makes great sense. So let's see what they did here. So let's go under the hood. Let's take a look at some stats on this one. It was released back in 2019, Concentration Eau de Parfum. Uh, the nose behind this is Fabrice Pellegrin. Um, he did Wanted by Azaro, A Smoke for the Soul from By Killian, uh, Eau Duel, Dosan, Volute, among others, for, of course, the house of Deep Tick. Solid resume, both in the designer realm, the niche game, and, of course, has a lot of experience with the brand. So the major notes to my nose, of course, uh, with the name of uh, Eau de Minté, you're thinking mint-based fragrance, so that's exactly what you're going to get here. There's a lot of mint in this release there's geranium which of course gives a, a minty uh, feel to fragrances too uh, and of course patchouli so you see a lot of green notes here so it's, it's going to be a green scent so my day with the scent uh, let's drain and of course this is a lucky scent sample let's drain this sample today and let's remind me of this introduction for eau de mate now upon first wearing and I was, a, I was hit with an invigorating mint. Um, it is a big herbal mint at the same time. Beautiful, authentic. That's what I want to get from my mint-based fragrances. It is sitting on a bed of 90s straight up aftershave. It honestly sounds like a really good combo, especially for the older gentlemen out there. But at some points in some wearings, um, this felt a little cheap to me, to be honest. I wouldn't say it was a bad first impression but definitely didn't go well for a sniff. It had a mountain to climb to sell me. Good thing is, is that I actually had two of these little Lucky Scent samples for it. Um, I didn't know why I had two. I purchased one for sure. The other one might've been with a bottle purchase. So I drained the first vial and I felt really lukewarm on the scent. And now the second vial, which is the one you saw me throw on the ground here from Lucky Scent, gave me a second chance, more wearings with the scent. So I decided to utilize both vials up for this video which is actually really unique for this video idea. So after a few good wearings, and I had a few good wearings with this one, this scent surprisingly received a lot of positive feedback from others, which usually minty scents don't really do. Uh, my first question to people giving me feedback was, did this fragrance remind them of their dad? Just because of the aftershave, minty, uh, barbershop fougère feel, which I did get a yes a few times. Eau de Monte Mint is very solid. Um, don't get me wrong, very solid mint. Um, it's paired with a very strong soapy um, geranium quality and a patchouli backbone. Uh, the patchouli and mint combo reminds me a little bit of the use of them in Cartier's Roadster, which is one of my favorite mints of all time. Um, but if you remind me of a designer fragrance that used to cost $50, not anymore, of course, um, it's not a good idea. But it, this, this fragrance is actually, I'm really on the edge uh, with this particular release and a lot of deep tick uh, releases, it feels like some of them, they just don't have that oomph to, to make me want to buy. Now in the heart of this release, the mint slows down, gives way to the geranium, the truly backbone. The scent goes into this green herbal vegetal side here more into the deeper dry down. It definitely shows its old school classic cologne vibe here. It goes into a fresh, clean, soapy vibe, barbershop, fougère type. At the end of the day, this isn't anything new to my nose. It's not a new idea. Um, did they perfect it? Um, you could say that. It's well balanced, that I need to say, but I'm not sure after testing, it's worth the deep tick price tag. Now let's take a look at Seasons Day Night versatility and performance. We'll start off with Seasons. Um, this is, of course, most mint based fragrances that have a little bit of depth to them, um, have to be spring babies, and they are. Um, this particular fragrance is, is absolutely great for spring. 
Also for summer, I could see this as a signature scent in the office, especially for an older gentleman that is wearing suits and wants something that is not, you know, classic, high-end, yes, um, unique, yes, in, in a way, versus all other fragrances out there. Um, I think this is a great one for a signature scent for a gentleman that's in 30s, 40s, and 50s, um, and it does have an office job. I could see this as a high wearing signature scent based release. Day or night, I feel like this is more of a daytime scent. Um, you can wear it at night, but daytime is where it's gonna shine. Versatility is very high, um, easy to wear. Um, very much an easy to wear type of scent. Uh, I feel like this type of scent, this type of build, um, you can wear it almost any time. Performance, the longevity was five to seven hours, which is, you know, what you're coming to expect for a freshie. You're not expecting nine, 10 hours here. I um, mean, there is low projection. Um, so that is one thing that I felt like this fragrance never really pushed the boundaries. You know, after a few hours, it felt like this one was very quick uh, to get off my skin. So at the end of the day, not surprising that this release in reviews gets kind of uh, compared to older releases like a Dracar Noir, Eternity, or even Platinum Egoist. Not that I'm comparing it to those fragrances, but those are older releases. This would not be the first fragrance I'd recommend from the famed house of Dietzik. Um, I actually started liking the classic theme here of this release the more I wore it. So happy that I had two samples because this sampling samples might have been worse. Um, but I think um, with time and again with a lot of fragrances, you got to give them time. Um, this is an, an original idea but I see what they were trying to do with this classic recipe and kind of reinvigorate the classic recipe with an idea of a modern minty top note. Um, it did well. And then that's one thing I need to, to say, like, uh, of course I love the, the note of mint and I absolutely want to find more mint based fragrances. Um, but at the end of the day, I don't think this is a wow minty scent. There was nothing new here. I feel like Roadster did this, not in this, not 100% the same way. Um, it doesn't, doesn't have really that barbershop feel that this one has. This has more of a classic feel. I feel like the Cartier is, is more modern, um, but at the end of the day, it wasn't really a wow scent. It was well composed, I gotta give them that, um, but nonetheless, uh, not a great one. At the end of the day, if I had to give it a score out of 10, um, again, I'm on the edge on this one. Do I want a bottle of this? This would be a great addition to my minty rotation. Yes, of course. But then I got to think of the price tag and where do I want to allocate my fragrance money? And this one, as far as the score goes, I think I'm going to give this one seven bottles out of 10. Um, and I feel like it's, it's missing something. Um, great scent. Um, and again, that score doesn't reflect the scent itself but I think there's something better in the mint game at the end of the day. Now that you heard my take on Eau de Minté, I'd love to see yours in the comments below. As always, a greater pour fragrance will make a lasting impression. Choose your scent wisely. Thanks for watching YouTube.